quite um, an overview kind of session today, just looking at our in range um, of solutions, um, which is ever growing and targeting kind of on those vertical areas that we specialize in, particularly around kind of distribution, warehouse management, stock control, things like that. So my name is Chris Housecroft. I'm, I'm pre-sales manager at Innovate. So I work with our sales teams to uh, find solutions for new and existing customers. But I also look after our um, product stack as well, which is what we call our in-range. So um, our in-range is quite um, comprehensive now. Actually, we've just been looking through it this morning to see what we kind of include in there as a current active um, actively sold product, if you like, um, and, and um, we've pulled them all together. So in our in, in range at the minute, we've got in wear, in transit, enhance, in van, in stock, in point, and Realitex. Um, the latter being from the recent acquisition of Warncliffe, um, their long-standing successful wholesale uh, carpet um, fabric solution Realitex has been brought into our in range um, and we, we've kept it as Realitex as you can see but brought it into the Innovate branding. Um, we're going to talk about some of these solutions today um, as we go through they're not all featured in my in my slide deck you'll be glad to know. Um, we're not doing any kind of demos of them it's just to give you a high level um, overview of what these are um, and then we can set up any kind of follow-ups or discussions as needed. So we're actually going to start with um, Enhance today. Um, that's our uh, enhancement pack for Sage 200. So we've started to build that out. That's got um, a number of features already in it. And we've got um, quite a nice roadmap that we're building out to build some extra functionality into there. We're also going to talk about Inware today, today, which is our warehouse management solution. And In Transit, which is our container management solution that works alongside Inware or on its own. Um, we'll have a little bit of a talk about InVan as well. Um, and then we're not going to really cover uh, in stock in point or Realitex, but just for an overview of what they are. So in stock um, is an ongoing development of a cloud based barcoding solution. So much more basic than Inware and is currently being built to work with Sage's um, intact cloud system, such as their cloud finance uh, business management solution. And then in point is a point of sale solution. And of course, I've mentioned Realitex already. So we're going to actually start with um, Enhance today. This is kind of the latest named product. It's been around for a little while with certain enhancements that we've had for customers and, and we've just kind of called it an enhancement pack, but we've given it an Enhance name now. So it's got it's all, all branded up. It's all kind of uh, product ready. Um, in terms of these, uh, the um, features that are already in this solution then, um, we can see there's a number already in here that are quite key to the people that are using the solution. Um, so we've got things like duplicate invoice checks on there. They kind of supersede the standard Sage tick boxes so that when you move out of the screen, um, we can kind of check um, that there's no duplicate references and we can choose whether or not it, it kind of just does a duplicate um, on the reference or the reference and the date. And then obviously the supplier and customer. So it works in sales ledger and purchase ledger. Um, we've got a mandatory dates function, which allows us to specify that dates have to be populated on sales orders and purchase orders before lines can be added so that it copies across. Big bugbear for users sometimes is that they don't populate those dates. They add a whole load of lines and then obviously the lines go in with blank dates as well. So even if you set the header, it doesn't, it doesn't populate down. So we, we can make that a restricted field until it's populated. Um, we can <laughs> sorry, also stop. Uh, blank customer order number and supplier reference number fields on sales orders and purchase orders. Um, so they have to be populated before an order can be saved. We've got a link to our support portal. That's really useful. That allows users to get into um, the support portal from within the Sage solution. Um, and then we've also got uh, on-demand backup. So with Sage 200, obviously backups are usually taken on a schedule, usually overnight, or if you ring our support desk, we will take a backup for you. Um, but actually what this allows you to do is take a backup yourself. So if you're going to perform a um, function such as kind of running some management reports off, or you're going to do your month end or your year end, it adds a button into there so that you can take your own backup um, and that stores on the server. And then if you want, you can use the Create Sage Company um, add-on or feature to actually create a company from within Sage as well, rather than having to go into system admin and go on the server. We can do add in warehouses, so <coughs> add in a new stock. Um, when adding a new stock item, we can add all the warehouses existing onto that stock item rather than adding them all manually. Um, next one is a cycle button through sales order and purchase order screens. So um, if you use Sage to enter orders, you'll know that you have to 
um, edit the lines and then you know if you edit one line you've got to save it close it go into the next line and so and so forth we just add a next and previous button at the bottom of that line entry screen so you can just cycle between the lines on the order without having to close the actual um the order screen itself um pop-up notes so they pop up when we go in then to sales orders purchase orders um also then the ability to hold sales or purchase orders when customer or supplier accounts put on hold so as standard in sage when you put a customer account on hold, the orders stay live. You can still dispatch them. You can still invoice them. Uh, whereas with this add-on, it will put all of their orders on hold to stop anybody from processing them. Obviously, Sage will already handle putting new orders on hold from that function. Um, narrative, this was quite a, a commonly um, common, common kind of feature request, really, that we did individually for a lot of customers, which was um, within the nominal narrative um, that's posted into the nominal ledger, um, to actually copy the second reference from the sales or purchase ledger invoice into that narrative. So when you're looking through the nominal um, nominal transaction kind of view or inquiry, you can see that detail in there. Um, item history, so a button to show the stock item history from software pop lines. Um, so that's just the ability to go and see those movements on stock items. So um, the line entry um, in sales orders and purchase orders is a locked screen. So when you get to that level, you can't then go and look around other areas of the system. It kind of freezes Sage up um, and that's the focus. So whereas with this button, that will actually pop up the stock item history screen so that you can go and see stock movement. I think you click through into the balances from there as well. Um, create purchase return from purchase order. So it's already in there from sales order to sales return. We've written it for purchase return. Um, and then the show quantity is default. So that's the ability to, when you go into an order, some customers don't want to see the values or whether they want to see the quantities instead, so we can set that as default. So these are all been released so far. Uh, we've got more on the roadmap. We'll be releasing a roadmap page, which will have all the features that we're planning to add, um, the ability for people to add their own ideas, upvoting other people's ideas so that we can prioritize um, what to put into our enhancement pack, um, but also all of the uh, help guides and user guides on how to use the solution. It's very light touch in installation and implementation. Um, just the features that you want to use can be turned on and then they're all very kind of self-explanatory so it's not a big task to get it implemented. So the next area we're going to look at is Inware. I have more slides on Inware. Um, so I'll run through them relatively quickly just to give you an overview of what it does. Um, this is probably an area that if, if anybody's interested in this probably want to pick up with uh, Account Manager and we'll go into more detail around what it can can do and what it can add. Um, so what we do in Inware is we can allow you to do various things such as tracking good, um, stock from goods in all the way through to goods out. That's everything in the middle, writing off, adding on, moving stock around um, in real time. And that's true real time. So actually there's areas in Sage 200 where the stock movements aren't actually in real time. Um, an example of that is, for example, when somebody's doing a GRN. So if they're in Sage in the screen doing the confirm goods received um, and they're keying all the figures in, um, it doesn't save that into Sage and you can't use that stock or do anything with that stock until they actually hit save on that GRN screen. Whereas with Inware, the way that we work is as soon as that stock is scanned into the system, it's immediately available in our Inware screens and we can see that the stock's there. We can move it around, put it away immediately rather than having to book in the entire shipment. Um, it's a Sage 200 module. So whilst there's a handset element, which the uh, warehouse users will use day in, day out, um, all the rest of it, so the back office screens, the inquiry screens, anything like that, they're all within Sage 200. It's it's completely embedded within the Sage 200 solution. Uh, we deal with pallet and bulk storage management, and that's quite um, a USP for us, really. There's nobody else that does it like we do, um, and it's usually a big selling point for the people that have gone forward with our solutions, is that we handle pallets so well. So we can define areas of the warehouse for bulk storage where pallets will live, and then when stock is booked in, it's booked in on a, <coughs> on a pallet, given a unique pallet reference. And then in terms of moving all that stock around, um, it's a case of scanning that pallet label and everything on that pallet moves. You don't have to kind of specify quantities every time you're moving pallet stock around. Obviously it's handheld functionality. Um, there's um, the ability to do enhanced picking. So that's not just picking based on what Sage is putting on a picking list in what it thinks is the right order based on your bin list in Sage, it's based on an actual bin route picking route, so the best route around the warehouse to get that pick in as um, streamlined as possible, but also doing things with lots and serial numbers as well, so we can make the oldest stock get picked first. We've done things for users where 
actually their pickings taking them to the bins that have got the lowest levels of stock. So what um, what one particular user of ours found during COVID was that they were bringing a lot of stock in um, and store it in the warehouse, but people were just going to the nearest location. The trouble with that is that they found they increasingly got more and more bays that had low levels of stock and were just reserving the bays in their warehouse. So actually we changed their picking process and logic so that it picked on the um, bin with the lowest stock locate stock quantity first so that all that older stock was getting used up before they were going into new boxes of, of stock. The other thing we've gone here then is dispatch management. So again, within Sage, you would uh, put your sales order on, you would print your picking list, maybe you'd go and pick it and then you'd dispatch that sales order. Uh, whereas we find that a lot of people either are sending stock out on their own vans or they're sending out with couriers and they might want a bulk dispatch of stock. So paperwork that contains a whole load of orders for different customers, uh, different products. Um, and so with our dispatch management, we can build up what we call a journey, which has got a whole load of picks and orders on it. And then when that's been loaded, we can either scan onto vehicle using the loading function and then print all of our dispatch notes and do our entire dispatch process in a single click. Um, so the way that it works is um, in where you would still create your purchase order from a goods in process in Sage 200 as normal. You would then receive the stock, confirm the pallets, close the GRM, move it up and away using the handheld. Um, and the invoice comes in as normal and, and gets recorded into Sage either directly or through any of the add-ons that you may have like Spindle or Cycon documents or anything like that, that still all, all works. The bits in the middle are then handheld based. So the ability to lock and unlock bins, reserve locations for certain stock items, um, our stock inquiries. So we slightly work separately to Sage um, bins. Um, and that's because Sage's bin control is that if you create a bin in a, in a stock item warehouse and you call it A1, that A1 against that item is technically a different location against A1 in another item. It's kind of like a free text field that's stored against an item rather than on a warehouse level. So we remove that and we handle all the bin control. And what that means is then in our inquiry screen, you can actually go in, you can put in a bin location and you can see all the stock in that bin location. Or you can put in an item and you can see all the stock um, for that item throughout the warehouse. Or you can put in a lot number or a serial number or um, or dates of transactions. We can do all that searching within a single screen. Uh, we can do stock taking of bins and pallets. Uh, we can move pallets around in items using the handhelds, building or splitting pallets, um, and also doing our replenishment. So we can set replenishment levels for our picking locations. And the solution will, um, the handheld solution will tell you when you need to drop stock down from those replenishment locations into the pickable locations so that you can keep stock rotation. Um, in place and stop it stop effectively anybody from having to go and you know pick from a higher location when doing when doing a pick um goods out process so we can uh, do our create and allocate sales orders and then pick all of our stock uh, complete the pick and confirm the pallets and then load and dispatch and then the invoice again is done in sage in terms of kind of reporting on that, then we've got some reports. We've built some more reports with Pan Intelligence that allows us to get insights into um, kind of in progress picks, stock levels per bin, pick productivity, who's picked what, adjustments, things like that, all within um, the visual interface of Pan Intelligence. And so, reasons that people might do this would be to remove or reduce paperwork, um, get more real time decisions. Um, so you can see the you know what's happening with the stock in real time. It allows you to make decisions a lot quicker. Um, you can get an improved accuracy. Um, stock is immediately available, as I mentioned, on that GRM process. So you'd have to wait for it all to be received before it's available. Um, less handling of stock. So get it straight in where it needs to go and then straight back out, which means you've got a higher throughput of stock as well. And then if you go for the reporting solution, you get more data insights because you get that all those touch points when people are scanning the stock. So one of the complementary modules for in where, but also available standalone um, is in transit. That's our container management solution. So this allows you to effectively set up container records and link multiple perch sword lines from different perch orders if you want um, onto a single container. And then that allows us to track dates against the container. So we can put the date expected at the docks, date expected to land at the warehouse. 
um, start to track that, whether it's been met or not. That means a lot of people are doing this in spreadsheets so we can get rid of spreadsheets completely. Everyone can see it in one single system. The order dates are going to be updated on the purchase orders if the shipment changes, if the uh, container is delayed. So that all happens seamlessly as part of maintaining the containers, which means everybody's got full visibility. You can then receive by container, which takes a lot of hassle out of having to receive multiple POs a lot of the time. Um, and you can do that with the Inware integration as well. So you can receive a container through the Inware solution. Um, and you can track all your notes and, and things like that within there, which again means people aren't looking in different spreadsheets and uh, areas of the system. Invan um, is our mobile van sales solution. I've only got one slide really just kind of showing a little bit of what this what this looks like. Um, it's had a relatively <coughs> recent redesign. Um, so we can see on here that we've we've got um, a more modern interface on our Invan solution if you've ever seen it in the, in the past. Um, but Invan is effectively there to allow people to take orders and make deliveries of stock um, out in the field. So we've got customers out there that will um, deliver and sell car cleaning products. Um, they might sell groceries. They might sell sweets. They might sell toys. There's a, a number of use cases. Um, biscuits and, and cakes is, is another recent one, actually. Um, so... Invan can be used, as I say, in, in kind of two guises, really. It can be used as a, as a selling solution. So driving around with stock in a van and making sales, taking payments, recording invoices from within, within the handheld solution, um, but also delivering orders as well. So orders that have been placed in advance can then go out and be delivered. Um, the Invan solution has its own back office uh, for managing all of those customers, suppliers, orders, stock levels, um, and then it's integrated into various solutions, including, of course, Sage 200 and Sage 50, um, but also we've done integrations into uh, various flavors of SAP and JD Edwards um, and a couple of others as well. Um, you'll see at the end of it, uh, my slide deck um, in a minute, that we're also looking to make that more cloud-based um, and integrate into some um, other solutions such as Intact and actually use their functionality as the back office rather than creating our own back office for those solutions as well. So as we kind of uh, ramp up and build out these solutions, um, they'll all get their own roadmaps. Uh, we've already got roadmaps for Inware. Um, so that's already active. People have been upvoting ideas. We've got a roadmap that's planned. We're starting to make releases in line with that roadmap. Um, you'll see on my screenshot, for example, that the, the most upvoted idea on here was multiple warehouses per order. And there's a bit of detail around what that's about, but that's currently in progress um, and due to be released. Um, in the next couple of weeks, um, and that'll be one of our um, roadmap items ticked off. We've also got one for in-transit. At, at this moment in time, that's currently at ideas stage. It needs building out into roadmap. Um, we've got quite a lot of ideas on there from existing customers. You'll see, again, things such as uh, container quantity shown on the stock item balance screen, some export into Excel, some ability to add attachments, all valid ideas that we'll look to build into the future roadmap. Um, as I've said at the start, the same will be happening with uh, the enhanced solution and van the same um, when that comes forward really into the cloud adopted version um, and in stock. So those two are, are both kind of in progress at the minute. Um, in stock is probably more further forward now than in van just due to the demand that we're seeing from the intact community to get a handheld solution um, to manage stock control with, with an intact inventory. That's a good overview whistle stop tour of the solutions. Um, as I say, if you want any more information on any of those, get in touch with your account manager or with the sales team and we can set up some more deep dive demos.